O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke Courage under persecution and sayings about the Holy Spirit Jesus said to His disciples, Also I say to you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities, do not worry about how or what your defense will be or about what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. Comments from the Church Fathers St. Bede It was said above that all occult works and words were to be revealed, here he concludes by saying that this revelation will not take place within a poor assembly, but in the sight of the heavenly city and the eternal King and Judge, wherefore he says, Also I say to you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. St. Ambrose our Lord, stimulating faith, inserts and submits to faith itself the foundations of the virtues, for just as faith is an incentive to fortitude, so fortitude is the foundation of faith. St. John Chrysostom, Homily 35, in Matthew. The Lord is not satisfied with interior faith, but demands of us external confession, impelling us to greater trust and affection. And as this is useful to all, speak in a general way, saying, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. St. Cyril. Paul says, For, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10 verse 9. The whole mystery of Christ is conveyed in these words. For we must first confess that the Word born of God the Father, that is, the only begotten Son of His substance, is Lord of all, not as one who had gained His Lordship from without and by stealth, but who is in truth by His nature Lord, as well as the Father. Next we must confess that God raised Him from the dead, who was Himself truly made man, and suffered in the flesh for us, for such He rose from the dead. Whoever then will so confess Christ before men, namely, as God and the Lord, Christ will confess him before the angels of God at that time when he shall descend with the holy angels in the glory of his Father at the end of the world. Eusebio. But what will be more glorious than to have the only begotten Word of God himself to bear witness in our behalf at the divine judgment, and by his own love to draw forth as a recompense for confession, a declaration upon that soul to whom he bears witness? For not as abiding without him to whom he bears witness, but as dwelling in him and filling him with light, he will give his testimony. But having confirmed them with good hope by so great promises, he again rouses them by more alarming threats, saying, But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. St. John Chrysostom A more severe torture is imposed on the condemned, to the good, or richer reward, it is as if you were saying, In this world, it is you who confess or deny me. In the next, it is I, the retribution of good and evil awaits you with interest in the future age. Eusebius. He rightly declares this threatening, in order that none should refuse to confess him by reason of the punishment, which is to be denied by the Son of God, to be disowned by wisdom, to fall away from life, to be deprived of light, and to lose every blessing, 
but all these things to suffer before God the Father who is in heaven, and the angels of God. Saint Cyril The first to deny Christ are those who, at the gates of persecution, abjure the faith, the teachers of heresies and their pupils also deny him. Saint John Chrysostom There are still other ways of denying Christ, Paul describes them when he says, they claim to know God, but by their deeds they deny him, Titus 1 verse 16, or, and whoever does not provide for relatives and especially family members has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever, 1 Timothy 5 verse 8, as well as in, flee from covetousness, which is idolatry, Colossians 3 verse 5. Since then there are so many modes of denial, it is plain that there are many likewise of confession, which whosoever has practiced, shall hear that most blessed voice with which Christ greets all who have confessed him. But mark the precaution of the words. For in the Greek he says, Whosoever shall confess in me, showing that not by his own strength, but by the aid of grace from above, a man confesses Christ. But of him who denies, he said not in me, but me. For though being destitute of grace he denies, he is nevertheless condemned, because the destitution is owing to him who is forsaken, or he is forsaken for his own fault. St. Bede. But less from what he says, that those who have denied him are to be denied, it should be supposed that the condition of all was alike, that is, both of those who deny deliberately, and those who deny from infirmity or ignorance, he immediately added, everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Saint Cyril. But if our Saviour means to imply, that if any injurious word is spoken by us against a common man, we shall obtain pardon if we repent, there is no difficulty in the passage, for since God is by nature merciful, He restores those who are willing to repent. But if the words are referred to Christ how is He not to be condemned who speaks a word against Him? Saint Ambrose. By the Son of Man, we must certainly understand Christ, who was begotten of the Virgin by the Holy Spirit, since in the whole earth the Virgin is His only Mother. Now, is the Holy Spirit greater than Christ, since those who have sins against Christ obtain forgiveness, but not those against the Holy Spirit? But where there is unity of power there is no question of comparison. Saint Athanasius, in Libro de Peccato in Spiritum the zealous Origen and the admirable Theognostus, ancient men, write that the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is when those who have been found worthy of the gift of the Holy Ghost by baptism regress to sin, they say that for this reason they can no longer obtain forgiveness, as Paul says, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened and tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit and tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to bring them to repentance again, Hebrews 6 verses 4-6. Each one gives their own reason. Origen thus expounds the cause of this, God the Father, on the one hand, runs through all things and contains each of them, the power of the Son, on the other hand, extends only to rational creatures, the Holy Spirit is present only in those who partake of Him by the gift of baptism. When, therefore, catechumens and Gentiles sin, it is against the Son that they sin, who dwells in them, nevertheless, they can obtain forgiveness by becoming worthy of the gift of regeneration. Already when the baptized are delinquent, Origen says that this sacrilege affects the Holy Spirit, and since they have attained to the rank of it, it is against him that they sin, and their condemnation will therefore be irrevocable. Theognostus, in turn, says that those who exceed the first and second thresholds deserve a lesser penalty, on the other hand, those who cross the third will no longer receive forgiveness. He calls the doctrine of the Father and the Son the first and second thresholds, the third consists in participation in the Holy Spirit, according to the words of the Saviour, but when He comes, the Spirit of truth, He will guide you to all truth, John 16 verse 13. It is not that the doctrine of the Holy Spirit is superior to that of the Son, but that the Son is condescending to the imperfect, while the Holy Spirit is the seal of those who attain perfection. Thus blasphemy against the Spirit is to be forgiven, not because the Spirit is superior to the Son, but because for the imperfect there is remission, while for the perfect there is no excuse. But the Son, as He is in the Father, is consequently in those in whom the Father is, and the Holy Spirit is with Him, in fact, the Holy Trinity is indivisible.
Moreover, if all things were made through the Son, and all things consist in Him, it must be recognized, without a doubt, that He is an all, so that whoever sins against the Son necessarily sins against the Father and the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, sacred baptism is given in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and thus those who sin after baptism commit blasphemy against the Holy Trinity. Finally, if the Pharisees had not yet received baptism, how did our Lord accuse them of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, in which they did not yet participate, and especially if we take into account that He did not rebuke them for simple sins, but for blasphemy? For there is a difference, he who sins transgresses the law, whoever blasphemes, offends the deity itself. Or, if those who sin after baptism are not granted remission of punishment for their sins, how is it that the Apostle grants pardon to the penitent at Corinth? How can the Galatians, who had regressed to the law, beget again until Jesus Christ takes form in them? Galatians 3. Why, moreover, do we reproach novice for abolishing penance after baptism? The Apostle, therefore, in his epistle to the Hebrews, does not undo the penance of sins, but, in order to combat the false opinion that, according to the right of the law, there should be multiple and daily baptisms as penance for sins, he certainly advises to do penance, but he also makes it known that there is only one renewal by baptism. Now, meditating on all these things, I turn my mind to the economy of Christ, who, being God, was made man, as God he raised the dead, and as being clothed with flesh he was thirsty, wearied, and suffering. When, therefore, a person, with his eyes turned only to the human part, sees the Lord thirsty, suffering, and outrages the Saviour as a man, he sins indeed, but it is enough for him to do penance to receive forgiveness, alleging in his cause the frailty of the body. When, however, a person, looking at the works of the Deity, doubts the corporeal nature, he also sins, it is true, and a great deal, but even he can obtain forgiveness if he does penance, with the excuse of the greatness of the works itself. However, when someone attributes to the devil the works of divinity, he draws upon himself an irrevocable sentence, because he thought that the devil is God, and that the true God is not more powerful in his works than the demons. The Pharisees had reached this degree of perfidy, when they saw the Lord exhibiting the works of the Father, raising the dead, enlightening the blind, doing a thousand other similar wonders, they said that they were the works of Beelzebub, it was the same as if they said, seeing the order of the world and the providence expended upon him, that the world had been created by Beelzebub. And they turned their eyes only to his humanity and limped in their minds, Matthew 13 verse 55, saying, Is he not the carpenter's son? And, how does he know scripture without having studied? John 7 verse 15, Our Lord tolerated them, inasmuch as they sinned against the Son of Man, but when they redoubled their folly and said that the works of God were of Beelzebub, he no longer tolerated them. In the same way he tolerated their parents while they murmured for bread and water, but after they had forged the golden calf and attributed to it the benefits conferred by God, they were punished, first with the death of a not small number of their own, then with the foreshadowing of divine punishment, when it is time for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin, x 32 34. Such is the sentence which the Pharisees now hear, condemned to the flame prepared for the devil, where they will be corroded with him eternally. Therefore the Lord does not say these things by comparing the blasphemy done against himself and that against the Holy Spirit, as if the Holy Spirit were greater than him, but shows that of the two blasphemies uttered against himself, one is less and the other more serious, because they blasphemed him seeing in him only the man, and attributing his works to Beelzebub. St. Ambrose There are those who think that Son and Holy Spirit are the same here, with due regard for the distinction of persons and the unity of substance, because Christ, at the same time God and man, is called Spirit in the sacred scriptures, the Lord's anointed, our very life breath. Was caught in their snares, Lamentations 4 verse 20. The Holy Spirit is the same as the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Spirit. If, then, Christ is both, why was this difference established, but to teach us that it is not lawful for us to deny the divinity of Christ? St. Bede. Or else, whoso said that the works of the Holy Spirit are those of Beelzebub, it shall not be forgiven him either in the present world, or in that which is to come. Not that we deny that if he could come to repentance ho could be forgiven by God, 
hot that we believe that such a blasphemer as by the necessity of his deserts he would never come to forgiveness, so neither to the fruits themselves of a worthy repentance, according to these words, make the heart of this people sluggish, dull their ears and close their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and their heart understand, and they turn and be healed, Isaiah 6 10, Matthew, 12. St. Cyril. For if the Holy Spirit were a creature, and not of the divine substance of the Father and the Son, how could it be possible that the reproach committed against him should carry a penalty equal to that which is established for those who blaspheme God? St. Bede. Not everyone who denies the existence of the Holy Spirit, or who denies his divinity, claiming him to be less than the Father and the Son, is guilty of an unpardonable crime of blasphemy, because he does so out of human ignorance, and not by diabolical envy, like the princes of the Jews. St. Augustine, De Verbo Domini, Sermon 1. Or else, if it were said here, whoever utters any blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, we should understand that it is any and all blasphemy, but as it has been said, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, the reference is not to any kind of blasphemy, but to such a blasphemy that its author can never be forgiven. In fact, the passage that says, God tempts no one, James 1 verse 13, must be understood in the same way, the reference is not to temptation in general, but to a particular kind of temptation. What this kind of unpardonable blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is, is what we will say next. The first benefit of the Holy Spirit to believers is the forgiveness of sins, and against this free gift the impenitent heart blasphemes. Impenitence itself, therefore, is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, it is not forgiven either in this century or in the next, for it is in this century that penance achieves the forgiveness that is valid for the coming century. St. Cyril after instilling in his listeners such a fear of departing from the correct confession, our Lord also recommends that they do not worry about the answer they should give, because the Holy Spirit has already defined in the souls disposed according to faith the appropriate words, like a master dwelling in them. Hence it follows, when they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities, do not worry about how or what your defense will be or about what you are to say. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas our Lord says as if in reference to the manner of enunciation, He says with what in reference to the manner of finding what to say, He says to defend you, that is, what you must say to those who ask, and neither with what to say, that is, what you must say to those who want to learn. St. Bede When we are brought before the judges for Christ's sake, we must, for Christ's sake, offer them our good pleasure, for the rest, the grace of the Holy Spirit will furnish us with our answers. Hence it follows, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. St. John Chrysostom, in Matthew, Homily 34. In another passage, however, it is said, Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, 1 Peter 3 verse 15. When a controversy arises between friends, then it is that he tells us to study our answer but when we are face to face with a terrible judge, then our Lord will inspire us with his own words, that we may dare, speak, and not allow fear to paralyze us. Theophylact of Ocrid. Since our weakness can have two causes, either the fear of torture, which makes us flee from martyrdom, or our rudeness, which prevents us from giving the reasons for our faith, with his words our Lord eliminates both, the fear of torture, when he says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and the fear of ignorance, when he says, do not worry about how or what to defend you, or what to say. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.